Okay, so I'm gonna um, just go over some yarn anatomy with these two types of ruffle yarns. Um, the things I'll be demonstrating are mostly specific to my um, after the after party pattern. That's what I'll be demonstrating here. But I wanted to go over the anatomy of the two types of yarns that I'm using first, um, just because I thought it might be helpful to define the terms that I use in the pattern. Um, perhaps better than a photo tutorial would. But before I get into that, I wanted to just show a quick tip about keeping this yarn untwisted and easy to work with. You can see how it spirals around itself pretty badly, and it can that, that happens just when you're unwinding from the ball as you use the yarn. So what I've done here is I've secured the ball with an old hair rubber band that I don't use anymore. Um, and then what I like to do is work the twist toward the ball, get it sort of undone. And then what I do is suspend the ball. My hands are going to have to go off camera here to do it. But then I suspend the ball. Actually, I'm going to have to work it. It's a combination of, you know, working the twist toward the ball and suspending it. And then maybe you have to do that a few times. But you can see here that it will untwist itself. And you can see the yarn um, untwisting on the strand. And now I've got a perfectly untwisted strand of yarn. So I wanted to offer that tip really quick, just a little bit of yarn management there. And then the second thing I wanted to show was uh, measuring the individual loops on the yarn. I found that the different brands of yarns have different sizes of loops. So I just measure along the bottom loop here. And I'm going to start on the five because my measure is a little squiffy. Um, starting on the five, I like to go from the one, the side of one track to the other side of another track. So from there to there. Got it just about at five inches and the edge of the other track ends up at about six and a quarter so that's one and a quarter inches from you know per loop and what I the reason I suggest doing that before you start is because the red heart sachet at least the sequins that I was working with measured only it was probably one inch but I was getting 15 sixteenths of an inch um, so that can make a difference because since these loops are bigger, there will be fewer of them in a given length of yarn. And they will, if you use every other loop, for example, to make the pattern, you will eat up more yarn than you would in a yarn where the loops are smaller. So, um, in the ones, in the sachet version of this pattern, I used every other loop, but with this yarn, it's big enough that I'm using every single loop, putting one stitch in each loop. So that's just something to keep in mind. If your loops are larger, you might be able to afford using every loop, but if the loops are smaller, then you might want to consider using every other loop. And also that might, you know, it's personal preference, but it might also be dependent on uh, how much yarn you have. So if you only have one ball, you might not have a choice there. So here we go with the anatomy of the yarns. We'll do the net yarn first. I'm calling, to be generic about it, I'm calling this a net yarn, like as in fishing net. So first we have the strands, and I don't know if this is universal or not. I, this, these are just terms that I made up to put in my pattern. So we have the strands, first of all. So here we have the first strand the second strand, the third strand, fourth strand, and so on, fifth strand, sixth strand, seventh strand, and then I call this one the last strand. It turns out that the red heart sachet only is, doesn't have this top strand, so there's only one, there's one fewer strand 
on that one. And various brands of these net yarns will prob likely have different constructions. And then we have what I'm calling the tracks. So here we have the first track, second track, third track, fourth track, fifth track, sixth track, and the last track. So what I've done in the pattern and in my experimentations is figured out that you can work into any one of these to have a different result in the fabric. So if I'm instructed to work into the second strand, I could work either here or here. Now let's say I'm being told to work into the third track. So here's the first track, second track, third track. I would put my needle, put it over my needle like that. Then I have what I called the rope method. So if I were to loop the whole, use the whole thing as one strand, I would call that a rope, rope knitting. But sometimes I want to work into the fourth track rope. So I would consider this to be the top and this to be the bottom. And if I want to do, I think I said fourth track rope, so one, two, three, four, I would go down to the fourth track, but I would rope all of the strands and tracks above it together. So that's where I came up with the term rope. So let's say it's a fourth track rope stitch when I'm wrapping the yarn around the needle. I'll go down to the fourth track and rope all of that around and pull it through the stitch. The other way would be reverse rope. And I do have that, and I think I have in the instructions, I say to third track reverse rope. So reverse rope would be going from the other way, from the bottom, but still the third track. The tracks and strands are always counted from the top. So I have first track, second track, third track, reverse rope. So I'm going to wrap the yarn up around the needle this way. So I'm going into the area of the third track, going around the third track, one, two, three, and doing a reverse rope, gathering all that yarn around the needle when I go to pull it through the stitch. So those are all the methods that I discovered while using a net yarn. And I'll go over the ribbons yarn, which I'm, the Red Heart brand called this ribbons but I'm calling it, to be generic, I'm calling it a tape yarn. Not to be confused with a tapeworm. So the anatomy of the tape yarns are much simpler. We've got two ways to work it, well, three. We've got the strand here at the top. And then I don't really have a name for this thick band section. But if you're working into the strand, obviously you'll just wrap the strand around the needle. And if you're working rope, I would do the whole thing. It doesn't call for that in the pattern, but that's what I would be calling rope. And then half rope is where instead of working into the strand, I'm working the other part of the yarn around the needle. That might make a little more sense once I demonstrate here. Before I get into that, let me show you a good way to count the rows. So I'm instructed to, from this bobble, the instructions say to work 15 rows of this, what I'm calling dual garter pattern, because this is garter stitch, but worked in two different colors. So you like, knit one color across and then you slide the stitches back and then you knit the same color or the second color across but it's purled and then when you turn it you purl and then you knit you'll see it's hard to for me to explain so anyway i'm instructed to work 15 rows of dual garter pattern after this bobble 
And a good way to count that is to just count the flaps of ruffle. So this was the first row after the bobble, because the bobble is made in this yarn. And we alternate colors, so every other row is the tape yarn and the other alternate rows are the um, net yarn. So 15 rows, this is the first row. And then the second row is the tape yarn. This is the third row, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15. So I've done my 15 rows and now I'm ready for my next bobble row. And the tape yarn rows, that is, are worked through mainly at this portion of the pattern through half rope. Actually, I think it's most of the way throughout. So half rope knitting, half rope is going around the broad portion of the tape yarn. So this is a stitch that I'm calling half rope knit. Full rope or just rope would be going around the whole thing, but I want half rope. So I'm going into the space and gathering up the broad portion. And I'm calling that half rope. Now I'm making a bobble. And the bobble says to work it through the strand. So I switch to working through the strand. And the bobble goes knit and purl into the same stitch. And then I have what I'm calling add one, and it's, I guess the equivalent is yarn over. So you just slide a loop onto the needle. Add one, purl one. Add one. Pearl one, and then slide it off, and then I turn. So I'm making a bobble here. And then I knit. And you'll notice that I uh, switch hands between knitting and purling. So when I'm knitting, I find it more comfortable to hold the yarn, the working yarn with my left hand and when I'm purling, I find it more comfortable to hold the working yarn in my right hand. So you'll see me make that switch here. It mostly just has to do with the angle of the yarn. One more knit row. And then I purl five together. And as you can see, working with the ruffle yarns, there's sort of a lot of maneuvering of my hands and there's a lot more wrist action and you'll find that you'll, you might notice that I sort of hold the yarn, I mean, hold the both needles and the work with one hand while I'm wrapping with the other hand. That's just, um, you know, sort of how I've come to be comfortable with using these yarns over time. And then, so what I just did was pass the second stitch over the first stitch on the working needle here. And that's how I've chosen to write the bobble for this pattern. So I just made a little bobble there. And then we finish out the row with half rope knitting. So I'll show three more of those. Half rope, knit, 
insert the needle, secure the broad portion of the tape yarn, pull it through, insert the needle, broad portion, pull it through. So after tape rows, we turn. And now I work a knitted net row. And the knitted net, the net row instructions say you work into the second track and then the second track and then the last strand. So I'll be showing that. So it's a knit row for this one. And I like to, here I'm going to show you just a quick other tip, skipping a stitch, skipping a space. I like to skip one at the beginning of every row. So you can see when I pull it out here that this is sort of the one that's obviously in use there because it's got that weird um, slack with tension. So this is the next available second strand. So I skip that one and use the next one. And I like to skip a stitch, skip a loop at the beginning of rows. It helps the sides be stretchy. And it all, in this particular case, it helps the front of the work be more voluminous in its ruffles. But then I'm, I am working this yarn one stitch per loop. So here's my next second track. And now the last track. So what I like to do when I'm switching from any, anywhere to anywhere else is to start where I was. So I just knitted a second track stitch. So I like to measure out to where I'm going on that stitch. So I measure out, here's my next second track, but I'm not using second track, I'm using last track, or I'm using last strand. So then I just trace down to the last strand that's even with that one. And I'll tell you why in a moment. So I work my way, now I'm going second track, second track, seventh strand, second track, second track, seventh strand, it repeats. So now you start where you are, I just did a seventh strand. The next available seventh strand is right there. And the reason I like to start where I am and then measure up from there, or trace, you know, trace the line up from there, is because when I'm working this, it looks like this one is the next available second track. And you could use it, but it might make the gauge a little too tight, be too hard to work with. So I want to make sure I'm using the next one and not the same one that is a stitch from the same column as the one that I just used. So here's the next seventh strand. And then I trace up to the second track. I do another second track. Here's the next one. And then the next stitch will be through the seventh strand. So I start on the second track since I just used one. Start where you are to measure out where I'm going to make my next stitch. So it'll be in this, in line with this one. And I trace down and I find that this is the one I'll be using. And I could easily use this one back here, but that's in line with the stitch that I just used, and I want to keep going along the yarn. So that's how I measure out, you know, figure out which strand to use next, or track. Here's the next available seventh strand, tracing up to the second track, and I use that. So then I slide, because the next row is a tape row, and my tape yarn is over here. And I'm getting twisted up. Pardon me while I untwist my yarns. So I'll demonstrate the half rope purl now. And again, we're skipping a stitch at the 
beginning of the row, skipping a loop. And sometimes with these yarns, the yarn can get like sort of sucked up into the stitches. So it does well sometimes to sort of give this a good tug because sometimes it can look like this one is the one in use, but really it's the one behind it. So this is the one I'm skipping. And I just place the broad part of the tape over and pull it through. So like I mentioned before, my hands are doing some sort of weird things here, unusual anyway. I'm holding the whole piece here with my left hand so that I can put the yarn over. But that's just me. That's just, everybody's probably going to have their own way of working with these yarns. That's what I have found is most comfortable for me, so. I think I'm knitting 13 rows now. I'm not going to show all 13 rows, but I'll show a couple. Now I turn. And we'll be purling with the net yarn now. So same thing, second track, second track, seventh strand, repeat that, and then one more second track. So we've got this second track is obviously the one in use. We're skipping this one and we're using this one. more time and trace down to the seventh strand and you can see I'm also kind of going behind the work here with my last two fingers and spreading helping to spread out the yarn with those fingers so there's a lot going on but that's just how I've learned to use these yarns second track. And now the work is over far enough to the left that I can go in front of it instead of behind it to secure, help stretch out the yarn. So what am I doing? Seventh strand. Nope. That was supposed to be another second track stitch. Let's try that one again. There we go. Now I do a seventh, a last strand. See, got a little too close to the needle tip and my stitch fell off before I worked it. There I am. Seventh strand, tracing up. And there we have it. So just did a bobble row and then a few more rows after that. Let's see how many. One, three. I did three rows after the bobble. There we go. So just a little visual aid for the after the after party.